Science Journal for Kids and Teens presents Where Did Flying Reptiles Come From? Adapted from the original peer-reviewed paper in the journal Nature, published on December 9, 2020. Research conducted by Martin D. Escura, Sterling J. Nesbitt, Max C. Langer, and others from the School of Geography, Earth, and Environmental Sciences at the University of Birmingham in the UK, the Department of Geosciences at Virginia Tech in the U.S., and the Department of Biology at the University of Sao Paulo in Brazil, respectively. See the full list of authors in the accompanying PDF, read by Miranda Wilson. Abstract. Have you heard of flying dinosaurs named pterodactyls? Well, you may be surprised to hear that they are not technically dinosaurs. Pterodactyls, part of the group pterosaurs, were reptiles. They were related to dinosaurs, which are also reptiles, but did not belong to that group. Pterosaurs were the first vertebrates that were able to fly by flapping their wings. This makes them all the more interesting. Have you ever thought about how it is possible that some animals started to fly? How did they get their wings? The general answer is evolution. But here the mystery deepens. For a long time, it seemed like there was a huge evolutionary gap between pterosaurs and most other animals. How did they come about? By looking at fossils, we found that lodgerpedids, a small group of non-flying reptiles, are close relatives of pterosaurs. Finding out about lodgerpedids told us a bit about how pterosaurs started to fly. Introduction. Could dinosaurs fly? Well, not exactly. Pterodactyls, which are probably what you think of if someone says flying dinosaurs, were in fact another group of reptiles. They are part of a group called pterosaurs. Some pterosaurs evolved to become the biggest flying animals ever, with wingspans of around 10 meters. Before them, some vertebrates were able to glide through the air, but pterosaurs were the first ones that could fly by flapping their wings. Reptiles, dinosaurs, pterosaurs. What's the difference? Well, dinosaurs and pterosaurs were both types of reptiles. One thing that made dinosaurs special is the way their legs were positioned under their bodies, giving them an upright kind of stance. This meant they used up less energy while moving around than other reptiles did. By contrast, alligators today, for example, have legs that sprawl out to the sides, but they are all reptiles. To be able to fly, they needed a very specific body. Their bones were hollow like birds are today. In fact, pterosaurs' bones were even more hollow than birds are. This reduced their weight, so their wings could lift them off the ground. In fact, the whole skeletal body plan of pterosaurs was highly specialized. Their wings were attached to their bodies by a bone that was actually one very long finger. Here is a picture of a cast of a pterodactyl fossil. Pterodactyls were just one type of pterosaur. You can see all of its bones, including the very long finger bone the wings attach to. But their specialized bones also have a disadvantage for us scientists today. Early pterosaurs were small, and their bones were so hollow that they easily broke. So instead of being fossilized, they were mostly destroyed over time. This means that we do not have very many well-preserved skeletons from the first pterosaurs to study. So it's hard to know exactly how pterosaurs developed their amazing flying abilities. Where did they get those from? Well, they probably inherited some useful features from their ancestors. But until now, we couldn't work out who those ancestors were. It is likely that the pterosaurs' ancestors also had hollow bones, which were also destroyed over time. No bones leave us with a mystery. So who are the closest living relatives of pterosaurs? Maybe they could help us understand how vertebrates took to the skies. Our research offers a solution to this mystery because, thanks to new discoveries and techniques, for the first time we had enough fossils to analyze entire skeletons from another group, lodgerpedids. It turns out they are close relatives of pterosaurs. Methods. We looked at lodgerpedid fossils. These fossils were from bones such as backbones, limbs, and skulls. We analyzed the bones with an x-ray scanner. Figure 1. This is what an x-ray scan of a larger petted would look like. Then, we compared them to bones of other animals in a huge database. We counted all the similarities between larger petted and other animal skeletons. The more similarities the bones showed, the more closely the animals must have been related. 
We focused on the similarities that evolved more recently in the different animals. They would tell us which ones were truly closely related. Results. Using a computer, we found at least 33 similarities between the bones of quadrupeds and pterosaurs. These similarities were located across the entire skeleton. There were many more similarities than with any other animal. We concluded that quadrupeds and pterosaurs must be closely related. The bony structure of the inner ear was very complex in both groups. Figure 2. We found out that lots of bones and structures were very similar between quadrupeds and pterosaurs. Here in figure 2a, you can see the bones of the inner ear shown in orange for quadrupeds on the left and for pterosaurs on the right. This is interesting as this feature is believed to be important for balance. Better balance is probably one of the reasons pterosaurs were able to fly and quadrupeds were so light-footed. Discussion. Although pterosaurs and quadrupeds don't look very similar, parts of their skeletons are very similar. As well as in the inner ear and brain, we found lots of similarities in the different animals' forelimbs, front arms, and wings. Here in figure 2b, you can see those bones from the forelimbs of the quadrupeds on the left and of the pterosaurs on the right. Both groups had very mobile forelimbs. Perhaps quadrupeds inherited these clever forearms from their ancestors, while pterosaurs developed the same clever traits into their amazing wings. As both animal groups share so many features, we can assume that they have a common ancestor. It's unlikely that both groups developed all these traits separately from each other at the same time. Quadrupeds used their inherited traits to develop a very quick and light-footed way of moving on the ground. Pterosaurs developed the same features into an ability to fly. This enabled pterosaurs to become the first flying vertebrates. In fact, pterosaurs and quadrupeds' special inner ears are very similar to birds. But birds didn't come from pterosaurs. They evolved from dinosaurs, in fact. Instead, birds evolved this similar feature because of a similar evolutionary pressure, the advantage of flight. Conclusion as you can see, evolution doesn't happen all at once. It takes a lot of time and many steps for new animals to develop. Both the pterosaurs and the quadrupeds inherited features that could have led to being able to fly, but only pterosaurs developed these features into wings. Try to think of that the next time you learn about an animal. Could two very different looking animals actually have a lot in common? Knowing that can tell us a lot about evolution and how different animals came to be. Thank you for listening to this recording. Visit our website, sciencejournalforkids.org, for more free science teaching resources.